the kingly office of Christ. Christ is king in a twofold sense. First, as he is God. Second, as he is God-man mediator. As God, he is king by nature. As mediator, he is so by office. As the second person in the Trinity, Christ is overall God-blessed forever. Romans 9, 5. Being the Creator, He has the right of dominion over all His creatures. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting King. Jeremiah 10.10 All that God is essentially, Christ is too. As Mediator, His kingdom is limited and special concerning only the elect of God and others as they may have to do with them. And therefore, in this relation, Christ is called the King of Saints, Revelation 15, 3. For they bow to His scepter and delight in His rule. That Christ is King appears first from the Father's designation and ordination of him to this office. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Psalm 2, 6 The primary reference in this is to the setting up of Christ, Proverbs eight twenty three, in God's eternal purpose over his church. Note the I will declare the decree in Psalm 2-7. God calls him my king because of his choosing him. As God appointed Christ to be a king, so he also appointed a kingdom to him. This was observed by Christ. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me. Luke 22.29 22.29 Second, it appears from the types and shadows which prefigured Christ in his kingly office. John Gill said, Melchizedek was a type of him, not only in his priestly office, but in his kingly office, both offices meeting in him as they do in Christ, who is a priest upon his throne. From his quality as a king, he had his name Melchizedek, meaning king of righteousness. And such an one is Christ, who reigns in righteousness. And from the place of his government, king of Salem, that is, king of peace. Agreeable to which one of Christ's titles is prince of peace, Isaiah 9, 6. David was an eminent type of Christ in his kingly office for his wisdom and military skill, his courage and valor, his wars and victories, and the equity and justice of his government. Hence, Christ, his antitype, is often, with respect to the Jews in the latter days, called David their king. Jeremiah 39. Ezekiel thirty three twenty three, thirty seven three to twenty four, and Hosea three five. Solomon also was a type of Christ as king. Hence, Christ in the Song of Solomon is called Solomon. Chapter three, verses seven, nine, eleven. Chapter eight, verses eleven and twelve, because of his great wisdom his immense riches, the largeness and peaceableness of his kingdom. Unquote. Third, it appears from the prophecies concerning him in this connection. In the first of all, it was said that the woman's seed should bruise the serpent's head, that is, destroy the devil and all his works. 1 John 3.8 That is an act of Christ's kingly power 
and is expressive of him as a victorious prince and triumphant conqueror over all believers and his people's enemies. Balaam foretold, There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Numbers 24.17 Isaiah announced, The government shall be upon his shoulder. Chapter 9, verse 6, Jeremiah affirmed, The days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper. Chapter 23, verse 5, Daniel owned him as Messiah the Prince. Chapter 9, verse 25, Zechariah declared, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just, and having salvation. Chapter 9, verse 9. We shall now proceed to show that the purpose of God has been accomplished, the types realized, and the prophecies fulfilled, that Christ is king in truth and in deed. First, he was so before his incarnation during the Old Testament dispensation. He was king over the people of Israel, not as a body politic, but as a church. Acts 7.38 He it was from whose right hand went the fiery law when he spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai. He was the angel that went before them to guide and direct to rule and govern them, whose voice they were to obey. Exodus 23, 20 and 21. He it was who appeared to Joshua with drawn sword in his hand to be the captain of the Lord's host, fight their battles for them and settle them in the land of Canaan. Joshua 5. He it was who said to Samuel, They have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. 1 Samuel 8, 7 Christ was king in the days of his humiliation. He was born king of the Jews, Matthew 2, 2. Nathaniel made the following noble confession of faith concerning him. Thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. John 1, 49. When he entered Jerusalem in a very public manner, he was greeted with, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Luke 19:38. He displayed his kingly power by commanding the elements, rebuking disease, expelling demons, all of which were subject to his imperial will. He exercised his kingly prerogative by displaying his legislative authority. I say unto you, Matthew 5, before he left this earth, he appointed ordinances and commissioned his ministers. Matthew 28 Upon his ascension to heaven, he was made both Lord and Christ, Acts 2.36. That is, he was both publicly declared to be so and made more manifest as such. He was highly exalted and given a name above every name angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. 1 Peter 3.22 He then received the promise of the Holy Spirit and his gifts from the Father, which he plentifully bestowed upon his apostles, whom he sent forth into all the world, preaching his gospel with great success, and causing them to triumph in him in every place where they came, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Mark 16.20 As king, he made the arrows of his word sharp in the hearts of his enemies. The rod of his strength, the gospel, 
went forth out of Zion, making many willing to submit themselves unto him in the day of his power, whereby his kingdom was greatly strengthened in this world. There are those who emphatically deny that Christ has yet taken unto himself his kingly office, supposing he will not do so until the millennium. This is a serious error. Every mark of royalty is now to be found in Christ. Were kings anointed? In quotes, 1 Samuel 10.1 and 2 Samuel 2.4 So has Christ been anointed with the oil of gladness above his fellows. Hebrews 1.9 Were kings coronated at the time of their inauguration? So has Christ been crowned with glory and honor. Hebrews 2.7 Do kings sit on thrones when in state? 1 Kings 2.19 and 10.18 So Christ is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Hebrews 8.1 Do kings hold scepters in their hands as an ensign of their royalty? So Christ has a scepter of righteousness. Hebrews 1.8 Do kings appear in robes of majesty and state? So Christ is arrayed with majesty itself, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the breast with a golden girdle. His head and hairs white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes as a flame of fire, Revelation 1, 13 and 14. Do kings appoint ambassadors to represent their interests abroad? So the apostles announced, We are ambassadors for Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Are kings possessed of authority and might to execute their wills? So Christ declared, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Matthew twenty eight eighteen. Even now Christ is Prince of the Kings of the Earth Revelation one five. Even now he has the key of David and uses it by opening doors which none can shut and shutting doors which none can open. Revelation three seven. God has already exalted him with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. Acts 5.31 God has already given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. John 5.27 Ever since his ascension, he has been upholding all things by the word of his power. Hebrews 1.3 Today, he is the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. 1 Timothy 1.17 But in His times He shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. 1 Timothy 6.17 And what is the practical application which must be made to us individually of what has been before us? This Is Christ our King? Or is the language of our hearts, We will not have this man to reign over us? Luke 19.14 Oh, my hearers, this is no mere academical inquiry or one for dispensationalists to fight over. It is a question of vital moment, and our real answer to it evidences whether we are really saved or no. If Christ be not my King in a practical way, then no matter what my profession, I am a rebel against Him. Can I truly say His will is my law, His word my rule of life, His scepter the authority I own? Can I truthfully say 
other lords beside thee have had dominion over me. Isaiah 26, 13, But henceforth I own no other king but thee, no rule but thine. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him in your heart and life, Lord of all. Arthur Pink